Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first story though, all about the UI Panorama. Several updates coming over the past few days with that UI Panorama in beta, and it's gonna be released hopefully sometime soon. Also, some big updates though. People thinking that Overwatch bans and VAC bans have apparently changed in terms of their countdown timers with that new UI Panorama release, and that is not true. So we've been reached out to by several sources, guys. I'll link them down below, and huge shout out to them for actually contacting us, guys. Apparently, it was actually first observed in UI Panorama if you were a previously Overwatch ban. And your account had a brand new countdown timer. Now, whatever these timers were, people thought there was actually a one year ban now for Overwatch bans. And once that countdown timer goes to zero, you were actually unbanned and your account was given back to you in full regularity. That is not true. Allegedly, those countdown timers are all loop timers, just like the VAC ban timers. And once they reach zero, they simply reset. So, for all of you guys who are crossing your fingers saying, Yes, I was Overwatch banned many months ago or many years ago, maybe my account's gonna be unbanned. It's simply not true. If you guys were any, in any way tied uh, to a VAC ban account or actually Overwatch banned in the past, your account will still be banned. And on top of that as well, we also have for back banned players out there, there's still a countdown timer. If you hover over their timer though, it does say this player is permanently untrusted. So I know a lot of people got their hopes up out there, especially the people that were falsely Overwatch banned. The only way to actually get unbanned from a false Overwatch ban is to try and contact Steam support several times. From what we've seen out there, guys, submit as many tickets as possible and they hopefully will get back to you eventually. But of course, with the whole VACnet story going down, we've had tons and probably thousands of false Overwatch bans being handed out. Some of them are actually, of course, not false bans. If you have any ties to any cheaters out there, you are going to be banned and probably not going to be reverted. But all I can really recommend to all of you guys reaching out to me over Twitter uh, about your Overwatch ban, if you were falsely banned, just keep submitting tickets and hopefully Valve gets back to you as soon as possible. And also, kind of cool news out there, we had Don Hossi post several tweets out there about OP skins and the skins that have been locked or lost on the OP skins website. I'm sure many of you guys are well aware of what's happened. OP skins no longer selling and actually trading CSGO skins, although uh, if you guys do buy CSGO skins on OP Skins website, I do want to warn you, I tried out myself. I was just curious what you could do with them. You can't do anything with them. So according to Don, his first estimation was seemingly a bit high and in terms of how he found that, but we can actually estimate right now, guys, at least a few million dollars in CSGO skins have now been locked up and lost in the OP Skins inventory. Now, what shocks everyone the most, though, is when you go to these actual bot band, uh, these, these band bots and you see these accounts that have left these items there, you see some tremendous items out there, sapphires, rubies, emeralds, whatever it might be and some very, very high tier skins with high tier stickers have been lost all entirely in the game, which should boost the market maybe a tiny bit, but again, uh, really probably not gonna influence any prices uh, in the future because of course, with the seven day trade ban, gambling's pretty much uh, put to a halt right now. So prices are probably gonna stabilize hopefully shortly, but yes, we could estimate right now millions of dollars in CSGO skins are now lost forever due to this whole express trade shutting down OP skins, which is actually crazy to, to think about. So I'd love to make a video out there about all the skins that have been lost, but there's just been so many. So also on top of that, guys, it's confirmed all of OP Skin's Steam bots have been banned entirely. So there's gonna be no more future operations there, at least for the time being, unless they think of some clever way to bypass this, which is pretty much unthinkable at this point. But it's crazy to see, guys, what's happened over the course of the past few weeks in terms of trading and OP Skins. But yes, all of their bots are now shut down, and all those millions of dollars in skins we're never gonna see again. And I know it's so shocking. I'm gonna make this, make this really, really short because we all know what's going to happen. It is pretty much confirmed now with Fallen with this picture on screen. Of course, he has obviously showing the Immortals contract in his hand. It does seem pretty obvious the current SK Gaming roster, if they bring Stewie with them, will sign with Immortals. But also, uh, kind of in cool news, I'll link the full interview down below, guys. We've interviewed with the CEO of Immortals, that is Noah Winston, revealed some amazing information coming very shortly. So the point of you guys watching this, it's going to be the day of the announcement. Apparently, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, they're gonna hold a big announcement for me. MIBR. Now, apparently, we've been mispronouncing MIBR the entire time. If you guys do know, MIBR, the brand, is actually standing for Made in Brazil. The way Noah Winston actually pronounced it in the video, though, is actually MIBR. So, if I ever say MIBR, MIBR, it's the same thing altogether. But apparently, according to Noah, that announcement will be today. And so, expect announcements for SK Gaming sometime soon where that roster will go. It is expected right now that Immortals will actually be the main company and MIBR or MIBR will be the subsidiary company that they do play for. So, according to Noah as well, quote unquote, what he said during that interview as well is apparently MeBR is going to be their subsidiary brand or team that they actually are going to call an esports organization and all the teams that play under the MeBR name have to be of the following to qualify to actually play for MIBR the teams have to be the best teams in their esport and they have to be a majority Brazilian roster so that's hence why SK Gaming is going to be their first esports roster with of course their CSGO team and he says in the future he wants to acquire other Brazilian top teams in their esports and as of right now they do have other majority Brazilian rosters under the Immortals brand 
but they cannot be under the MEBR brand until they're better and actually the best Brazilian lineup in that scene. So some extremely high standards coming for MEBR in that brand as well, but some big announcements coming soon. As of today, we're going to wait for SK Gaming's announcement to see who exactly is going to join the MEBR team. And it was also made official a couple days ago, guys. Godsense organization is now not going to be coming back probably anytime soon or anytime in the near future, if at all, to the CSGO scene as well as any esports scene out there. After Refresh did have their ties with Godsend, they were forced to sell them off to Red Reserve. That entire roster will continue over there for who knows how long. I've told you guys my, my doubts about how long they'll last with Red Reserve. This seemingly how Refresh kind of sold them off pretty fast there, arguably for a pretty cheap price. Red Reserve having financial issues, not only with their Call of Duty team, other teams out there as well. And in the, in the past, they haven't had uh, the ability to hold down rosters for too long. So I am afraid if Godsend's roster for Red Reserve cannot actually make the major qualifier or do anything substantial, making the minor at least, I really can't see them lasting too long. But again, we have no idea the future of them. We do know for sure, though, Godsend as an organization is going to be done for now. So, of course, that was Pronax's creation back in 2016. His future in CSGO, of course, playing with Digital Chaos. So, he still will continue as a pro player out there. It's really kind of sad to see such a great creation go to somewhat of a waste. But again, they had a great ride as it was and really didn't made a dominant statement inside the Swedish scene, being one of the new Swedish teams out there. They definitely made a big dent, a big splash when they first came to the scene. So, Godsend's now officially done. The big question now we do raise is in the future with this face at major rule refresh still has ties to another organization out there known as heroic heroic probably has even a better chance actually not even close a definite better chance than uh, god sent to make the minor and possibly the major qualifier so a refresh have to sell them off as well in the future we're going to shortly see here uh, as we do have the minors coming up pretty soon here for the european minor i think it's going to be uh, around mid to late july those teams are going to be finalized so who knows how long refresh is going to wait to actually sell off heroic's name but it's going to be cool to see if they do sell them off who will actually buy that roster because they are a rising Danish roster and arguably one of the best right now to have a chance to qualify. Now on top of that as well, coming up today as well, at the point of you guys watching this on the 23rd, not only do we have a big MBR announcement in Sao Paulo, Brazil, we also have the start of the closed qualifiers, the North American closed qualifiers for the face of major, which began last night. So of the 16 teams on screen for all of you, six of them will go through and join the two South American qualifiers. One was actually Team Furia, one was now Tem Como. Those are their top two Brazilian teams who won their two closed qualifiers. So six of the 16 teams, uh, notable teams on screen for all of you. We have NRG, probably your favorite team there. Team Mythic going to be there as well as Ghost Gaming. Ghost Gaming obviously going to bench Steel because he is he is banned from major events and even the qualifying events as well. We're going to see what six teams go through, guys, but it's going to be very exciting to see. My own hope right now is currently, of course, we want to see NRG there. We want to see the best North American talent get through, but on top of that, I would love to see a stream team, Team Mythic, upset. So leave a comment down below. Of these 16 teams, guys, what six do you think are going to go through to the minor itself? And of course, I'll link the post down below. I wanted to show you guys a quick picture image as well where we're at in terms, of, in terms of dates for all the closed qualifiers for these minors as well as uh, of course the major qualifier coming up in the next few months as well to give you guys kind of a more of a roadmap as to where we are going to the face at major and I cannot wait if you look at these rosters all across all the minors of course we've already solidified our Chinese teams our CIS teams but when it comes to North America and Europe that's really where I focus my attention we have some amazing teams having chance to actually qualify for the minor and of course hence then have a really good chance to make the major qualifier as well so of all the four to, uh, all the four regions out there we will have eight teams from each region eventually and two teams from each of those regions will eventually join the other teams at the major qualifier it's going to be very cool to see what teams like a qbf last time around uh, quantum bellator fire was a surprise team of our last major what team is going to be the upset team this time around and really surprise us all and hopefully have a better appearance in the major so i cannot wait to see how that actually breaks down and that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK news i hope you guys all enjoy as always thank you all for watching i have so many videos to record this weekend i really hope i wish i could give you guys some some key hints as to what's going on in the future also on top of that i have actually secured several interviews for the future as well so thank you all for the great response on my previous interview with hunter shrum hunter shrum was actually he's going to be a collegiate csgo player Sorry, avoid the motorcycle in the background, but it was a great interview and I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. So feel free to comment down below or maybe tweet at me, anyone else you guys want me to interview in the future. I love doing that kind of thing, giving you guys more of a perspective of other players out there in the scene. So again, I'll link that interview down below. A lot of great videos coming soon. Uh, there's gonna be a VGO video coming soon, probably a gambling video coming soon as well. My last gambling video of all time, most likely gonna be, and some other great stuff coming to the channel soon. So thank you all for coming. And uh, this is gonna be the last video you guys see of me without furniture. So an apartment tour is also coming very very soon. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye. Guys.